Hello, and welcome to the next What the heck Tagon video. Intro. What the heck Tagon? So today we're going to e explore a different integral over powers of a different function. This time, instead of the natural logarithm, it will be over the tangent function raised to different powers, and the integral will be, will be from 0 to pi over 2. Um, so this, this one's going to take a little bit longer. It has a really, really nice, satisfying ending that I'm going to use to connect into a different integral video. But to get to the solution of this problem, it's going to take a couple of videos. So today, we're just going to go through step one, which is evaluating how an integral is related to itself. I'm not going to be finding explicit values for these for this class of integrals. I'm simply going to be determining which ones are worth looking at and how the ones that are worth looking at are related to themselves. So I'll do that in this video and in the next video I'm going to find a recursive formula for those integrals. And then in the third video I will show how that relates to the original question of the what this integral over the tangent function is equal to. And that'll take about three videos, I'd say, and then we can connect it and explore sort of the solution to the whole problem and get to uh, a very interesting connection to the gamma function, which we did before with the natural logarithm function. In this video, I'm also going to show and explain an interesting fact that was mentioned to me in the comments section of the natural logarithm video, and a neat way of deducing the uh, relationship to the factorial function that we got. So let's get to our task at hand. Alright, so today we're going to assess, we're going to start assessing a certain integral that I wanted to investigate, very similar to the last one we did involving the natural logarithm, except this time it's going to involve the tangent function and powers of the tangent function. And so we're going to define this function, capital T of x, as in tangent, just like we did capital L for logarithm, we're going to define it as the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the tangent of t to the power of x with respect to t. Now, this has a very, very nice closed form expression, but we have to be careful because if you think about it, taking the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the tangent function, when x is 1, the area under the curve is infinitely large but it's just infinitely large because if x is anything less than 1 this area is completely finite anything larger than 1 the area continues to grow without bound um, so this restriction will actually this uh, this function will actually have to have a restricted domain of an absolute value of x less than 1 all this is saying is simply take the area under this curve that is the tangent function raised to various powers of x those powers that being um, between negative 1 and 1 because any bigger in either direction will cause a divergence in the size um, and I imagine that if we're, we were to talk about complex numbers this would simply just be uh, confined to the unit circle to within the unit circle on the complex plane if I had to take a guess it would seem a bit weird if it weren't um, but essentially we're uh, you know just going to evaluate evaluate what what this is equal to and at the end of these three videos, we're going to have a closed form expression for this that is very, very simple and very, very nice. But to start this off, I have to sort of go off in a different direction that may seem a bit out of left field, but this will become very relevant to us solving that problem later on. So what we need to do is we need to assess a certain class of integrals, which are again different powers of a function under the integral. This time it's, a, it's an improper integral, and we're going to be evaluating the more or less how these, what the values of these integrals are. For the, so the integrals from 0 to infinity of the natural logarithm of t to the power of k over 1 plus t squared dt, where k is a natural number or 0. So it is any non, k is any non-positive integer. Those are going to be the things we're considering. I'm going to call this in general i of little k right, or i, right, we can just call it i as well, um, and I'm going to break it up into the, a sum of two different integrals, so it's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural logarithm of t to the power of k over 1 plus t squared dt, plus the integral from 1 to infinity of that same function, again, where k is a non-negative integer, <clears throat> so 0 or positive whole number. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to call this one J, and we're going to call this one capital K. <clears throat> so these are both functions of little k, right, which are the determining factors of what this function is going to be equal to. Um, and we're just going to set J aside for a second. So J is the integral of this function from 1 to 0. And so we're just going to consider k for a second. So we know that j is this thing, but we're just going to look at k for now. So I'm going to rewrite all of this up here. So this is what we've got so far. <clears throat> we've got that i is equal to this integral that we've defined, which is determined entirely by the power of k, and we're splitting it up into capital J and capital K, where capital J is the integral over the same function from 0 to 1, and capital K is the integral over the same function from 1 to infinity. So I said we're setting J aside, and we're just going to consider capital K. So capital K is equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of the natural logarithm of t to the power of little k over 1 plus t squared dt. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make a bit of a substitution. We're just going to say let t equal negative t. I'm sorry, not negative t. We're going to let we're going to bring t to be 1 over t, which means that dt is going to become negative 1 over t squared dt. Remember, this is, a, this is an integral that has bounds. It's a, it's, a, it's a definite integral, which means that the variable that we use is just a dummy variable. It has no, there's no reason for this to be t or any other letter in particular. So the fact that I'm doing a substitution from one letter to the same letter is irrelevant, because as soon as I make the substitution from, say, t to u, I can immediately read label all the u's back into t's. But because it's a definite integral, it doesn't actually matter what we call the label, what we call the variable that we're integrating with respect to, so I'm just keeping it as t. I hope that's OK. So what you, when you look at this, we're going to replace every t with 1 over t, and we're going to replace with dt with the derivative of 1 over t, which is negative 1 over t squared times dt. So. This is going to look like, oh, and the bounds, when we plug in 1, 1 over 1 is just 1, and 1 over infinity in this case is just 0. So we end up with the integral from 1 to 0 of the natural logarithm of 1 over t, all to the power of little k, divided by 1 plus 1 over t squared, right? And we simply replace dt with this new differential the determinant of the 1 by 1 Jacobian matrix in this instance. That's what a u substitution is, by the way. And it's negative 1 over t squared dt. Now we can do some simplifications, right? So this negative 1 is going to allow us to flip the bounds. And this t squared in the denominator is going to multiply into this denominator. And we're going to get 1 plus t squared, just like the denominator we had before. So first, I'm going to do those two simplifications. I'm going to use this negative symbol to flip the bounds. And I'm going to use this t squared in the denominator to multiply this denominator to get back to the original one. As we can see that the t squared times 1 over t squared is going to give us 1, and t squared times 1 is going to give us t squared. So I'm going to rewrite it in that way too. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural logarithm of 1 over t to the power of little k over 1 plus t squared dt. And now we're going to make one more simplification. Because what is the natural logarithm of 1 over t? Well, the natural logarithm of 1 over t is the same thing as the natural logarithm of t to the negative 1, which means according to logarithm rules, we can bring the negative 1 out front because it is the power of the input of the, of the logarithm. So we get negative times the natural logarithm of t, which is to say that the, the, the logarithm of the reciprocal of a number is just equal to the negative of the logarithm of the original number. The thing that's going to happen here, though, is that this negative 1 is going to be raised to the little k power. So we're going to have a factor of negative 1 to the power of little k on the outside of this uh, integral here. So I'm going to erase that. And because of based on the rules of logarithms that we just showed, held in this case, we end up with negative 1 to the power of k times the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural logarithm of t to the power of little k over 1 plus t squared dt. And take a look at this. This is just negative 1 to the power of little k times what we called j. Right? j is just the integral from 0 to 1 of this function on the inside, which is exactly what this is, just multiplied by negative 1 to the power of k. But remember, we said little k was simply a non-negative integer. So this is going to either evaluate to 1 or negative 1. Right? So when k is even, 0, 2, 4, 6, etc., this is going to be 1. 
and we're just going to end up with j, right? This is big J right here, the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural logarithm of t to the power of little k all over 1 plus t squared dt. That's what, that's what we uh, assigned j to be. So in the case where k is even, in the case where little k is even, big K is just going to be equal to 1 times big J, which means <clears throat> that, uh, so this is what we've determined. I'm just going to rewrite stuff now. So we've determined that this was equal to negative 1 to the power of K times the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural logarithm of T to the power of little k over 1 plus T squared DT, which by our own definition is equal to negative 1 to the power of little k times big J. Now, since i is equal to big J plus big K, and we found out that big K is simply either positive or negative big J, depending on what little k is, we can actually figure out a certain cool fact. So i is equal to capital J plus capital K, which is equal to J plus J, or 2J, when K is even. Right? Because when little k is even, this is just 1, and we get big J back. And since then, in those cases, big K is equal to big J, that must mean capital I is equal to big J plus big J. Except when k is odd, this is negative 1. So we end up with big K getting becoming negative big J, which means for odd values of little k, I is equal to big J minus big J, which is 0. Right? So J minus J, which equals 0 for k odd. So we've just found out a neat property. We've just shown that for k odd, our integral from 0 to infinity of the natural logarithm of t to the power of k over 1 plus t squared dt is equal to 0. And since this function inside is only 0 when t is equal to 1 because of the natural logarithm, that means everything from one, 0 to 1 is equal to everything from 1 to infinity. It's just that one of them is the negative of the other, and so they add together to make 0. But for k even, we've shown that the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural logarithm of t with respect to little k over 1 plus t squared dt is simply equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of that same function. The natural logarithm of t to the power of little k over 1 plus t squared dt, which also means that everything from one, 0 to 1 is equal to everything from 1 to infinity uh, in area. So you could theoretically find the uh, values of this, of this function to different powers uh, from 0 to 1 and get perfectly good values, but we care about the uh, entire integral from 0 to infinity, and that actually helps us by eliminating essentially half of them, right? k odd gives 0 when we do this integral. So we don't need to worry about any versions where k is odd. We'll actually find out uh, that, that these will all have to be 0 in a slightly different way when we, define an, when we find out an actual recursive way of figuring out the values of all of these uh, integrals. So let's do a couple of examples. So we're going to do the first two cases, which are 0 and 1. Not too difficult, the second one, right? So uh, we're going to do i of big I of little k equals 0 which is the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural logarithm of t to the power of 0 over 1 plus t squared dt, which is, of course, the natural log, the natural log to the power of 0 is just 1 like anything else. And so we get dt over 1 plus t squared, which is, of course, equal to the arctangent, or inverse tangent, of t from 0 to infinity, which if we allow limits to just kind of go unsaid, we get pi over 2 minus 0, which is equal to pi over 2. So that is the first term in our sequence of these, um, of these integrals with different powers of k. It's the 0 power, and it's the first one in the list. The next one is, of course, i uh, of k equals 1, which is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural logarithm of t to the power of 1 over 1 plus t squared dt, which is, of course, just the natural logarithm of t over 1 plus t squared dt. And I believe it was Papa Flemmy, Flammable Maths, that showed this was, in fact, equal to 0, using a very similar argument to the one that I just did. In fact, I'm using just the general argument to show the case that all odd powers of the natural logarithm in this function yield uh, uh, integrals which equal 0. Um, but 
his proof that this one equals zero is what inspired me to sort of figure it out for the rest of them. Um, but if it turns out that if you limit this one to just zero to one, right, like like we would to find the uh, the area that ends up canceling with itself, you actually end up with, if I'm not mistaken, you end up with negative capital G, and capital G is Catalan's constant, uh, which shows up a lot in, I believe, combinatorics. So, uh, and it's about 0 0.915, if I remember correctly. I don't believe that it's known if, I don't believe it's known if this is uh, irrational or not, it's equal to some really strange sum over odd numbers, I think, odd squares, maybe something like that. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I'm not going to be going into these half values of these integrals. I'm only going to be considering the integrals from 0 to infinity, and at this point only with k is equal to even numbers, because in the case where we go from 0 to infinity, uh, k being an odd number will just yield 0. So um, these are going to be the ones that we care about with, with, with even values, and we see that the first one is pi over 2. And you'll notice there's going to be a consistent theme of pi over powers of 2, and I will be happy to prove that when we do our recursive definition in the next video. Um, before I leave, I want to do one more, um, one more little thing. So for the last video I did, I proved this relation right here. So I proved that this function, capital L of x, which is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural logarithm of t to the power of x dt, is equal to negative 1 to the power of x times x factorial. And someone in the comments, whose name I will edit onto the screen right now because I can't remember it, said a very, very cool remark, that you can find that it has to be related to the factorial function simply by doing integration by parts on this. So let's do that. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural logarithm of t to the power of x dt, and our integration by parts is simply going to be 1 times this function. So we're going to differentiate the integrand, and so we get we get x times ln of t to the power of x minus 1 times 1 over t dt. And now we take the thing that this is being multiplied, which is 1. In the case of the integ integration, it's dt. And then we bring that up and we get t. And now the integration by parts is simply multiplying those together. And we get t times the natural logarithm of t to the power of x from 0 to 1 minus. And now these t's are going to cancel. And so we're going to end up with x on the outside, because x is a constant with respect to t. And we're going to have the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural logarithm of t to the power of x minus 1 dt. Now, if I plug in 1 into here, I get ln of 1, which is 0. So this goes away at 1. And if I plug in 0, t goes to 0 much faster than the natural logarithm does. So this is all 0. And we simply end up with minus x times the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural logarithm of t to the power of x minus 1 dt which, if you look carefully, is just negative x times capital L of x minus 1, right? So this is negative x times capital L of x minus 1, right? Which means we've discovered a recursive functional, not recursive, we've discovered a functional equation for our, for our function uh, capital L of x, and it's simply this. That capital L of x, which is this integral right here, capital L of x, is equal to negative x times L of x minus 1. And if you keep applying this functional equation to this, you're going to end up with x factorial out the front with x powers of negative 1, which is exactly uh, what we end up with when we solve the problem like I did by doing a substitution and ending up at the gamma function. Um, so that's a lovely little piece of information. I'm glad I learned that. Uh, there's probably other ways to attack this problem to try and solve it for this. Um, I'm just glad that somebody else explained something really neat that I could use to sort of motivate this conclusion, even if I didn't do the full proof and, and actually showed that this was the end uh, of the result. So I'll see you in the next video when we actually start to evaluate those cla that class of integrals that I did uh, earlier on in this one. Uh, we're going to probably go through a few values. I'm going to show you how you can determine all of them, and we're going to see how that's actually connected in the third video to the solution of the original problem that I posed, which was that integral over powers of the tangent function. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.